Now we're going to jump back to our code and finish this program. It's been a lot guys, just take a moment, dust off the dust in your brain and figure out where we left off. I know it's been a while, but where we left off is we were creating our function load patch. Well now we know what an argument is, so we can actually put something in this parentheses and that's why they were important because now we're going to create a new variable inside of this function. And that variable is gonna be the patch number. And that patch number, we can assign it a type, basically a number, int. And by assigning it that type, we use a colon, and that's going to assign it the type. That's the right syntax. Thankfully, to avoid confusion, all of our other functions don't have arguments. But there is one more function we need to create. And this is why I explained that check error class to you guys. Next, we're going to create a function check error. And inside the parentheses of that function, we're going to use a variable called the OS status as the input. And that OS status is going to be the as assigned the type OS status. And that's an actual type. You'll see that text turn green if you do it properly. You want to make sure if that text does not turn green, you want to make sure that you have the frameworks imported, audio toolbox and foundation is always good to have. So make sure you have those. And if you're getting an error still, just please feel free to leave it in the comments below. But inside this OS status function, we're going to do something special. I don't know if I've taught you guys this before, but we're gonna do something called an if statement. What are if statements? If statements are basically conditions. So if the weather's nice outside, I'm gonna go outside because it's nice and sometimes it's not nice. So why wouldn't you go outside? That's an if statement right there. If the weather is nice, I'm going outside. Like not gonna lie, to be honest. Inside this check error function, we're gonna create an if statement. In that if statement, we're gonna use our variable that we just created, OS status, which is the input of another OS status. So that OS status, we're gonna say if OS status is not equal to, exclamation equal means is not equal to. If OS status is not equal to no error, and that's actually, it will know what no error is. It's basically zero. That means no error. So if it's not equal to that, then we write some more curly braces because we're going to do another instruction inside those. So make sure you have those next set of curly braces. And inside that, we're going to print something on the screen. Remember, it prints it in the console. So we're going to print something, but instead of just typing error message in there, that wouldn't help at all. That would just print error message. Like that's not gonna help, that's not gonna cut it. So we actually have to go into that sound error class. And the way we do that is we type sound error dot, sound error dot. And it, the program's smart, it's gonna know what you mean. You have your sound error file there that hopefully you got from the starting project files. So we can write that and get error message is a class func, remember? Get error message. And we just access that by writing a dot in between. And that's why semicolons are used as periods in programming and not dots, because dots we can actually, or periods, we can access another property of a class or even another function. So we're gonna access our class func get error message inside the sound error file. And we're going to pass our OS status as an argument. And to tie this back, if we look in our sound error file, we can see that we have each of our cases, our OS status, and the return value of those, which is a string. Well, the OS status is the input that it gets. So that's that case. It's getting the input of that. And the print actually prints the return value of our class func get error message. So that's going to print, if each error comes up, it's going to print the proper 
string for that error basically help us understand it in English instead of some computer gibberish. All right, here's where we get into the fun part. We're going to go back to our initiate audio function. Remember, our main function. And now it gets a little bit funky. We can run a function within a function. It's trippy. So what we're about to do, we write check error, and then inside the parentheses of check error, remember we just created that check error function. Well, that's why we need it because the purpose of what we're doing is we're gonna run a function inside of our check error function. We're gonna pass that as an argument. And the reason we're gonna do that is because then each time we run our function, we can check and see if there's any errors running the function. And it's gonna output it if there is any so that we can clearly see that. And why, why can we pass this OS status new AU graph? Why can we pass that as an argument? Is it a variable? Well, in a way, yes, it is a variable because it returns, it returns something. And I want you guys to pause the video for a second and guess what, what is that new AU graph function going to return? What's it returning? If you guess correctly, that new AU graph function is returning an OS status. And that's why we can run it through our check error function. Because if you remember, this function takes the input of an OS status. And that's why we're able to check for errors. So we're actually running this function within this check error function. We're not just checking for the error. We're also creating a new AU graph. What this new AU graph function does, it's very special. It has another argument inside of it. This is a lot of parentheses, guys. Inside this new AU graph function, we give the address of our audio graph. And the reason we do that is so that Apple's core audio API, it can take the audio graph address and assign that value, that, that value we've been missing. So now we've actually created our audio graph in a way. We allocated the memory to it, and now it exists. So I'm going to go ahead, that blanket that's lying on the floor, our audio graph, we're going to go ahead and put a new blanket on there to represent we did it. We created the audio graph. After we created our audio graph, we're going to jump down to our create output node function. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new property or variable and we're going to call this CD. This is our audio component description. So when we create this audio component description, we just set our variable equal to audio component description. And we want to make sure we have parentheses there. And you're going to want to indent these a little bit and you'll see why. There's a lot of stuff inside these parentheses. And it's gnarly, as Eric Ford says in his article. It is kind of gnarly, but we're going to break it down so you guys can understand it. First, we have a variable, the component type. And this is an OS type of K audio unit type output. That's just the name of our output audio unit, the main type of it. Then we have something, a subtype, which is another variable. And you want to make sure you have a comma in between the component type and the component subtype. Make sure you have commas except for the last line in the parentheses, or else you're going to get errors. So make sure you have those. So that component subtype is under the name K audio unit subtype underscore remote IO. And that's just the subtype to get a little bit more detail. And finally, this one's easy. I'm going to let you guys guess. Yeah, you can see it right there. Our component manufacturer is Apple because we're using Apple's devices to create our app. Sometimes it might be different, but in our case right now, it's not. And then component flags and component flags mask. We won't worry about those for now, but for this, we're just going to set them to zero. After we create our component description at the bottom, we have our check error function. And inside of it, we have another function, AU graph add node. And you'll notice a familiar theme with these functions. All of them should be turning a specific color when you type that text AU graph node. You notice it turns a color 
If it's not, you'll probably get an error and it means you haven't imported the audio toolbox. So make sure you have that line of code. This is going to allow us to use Apple's API. And yes, AU graph add node is what's going to add our output node to our audio graph. So it's going to look something like this. Our piece of paper, our output node is now added to our blanket, our audio graph.